Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This is a computer with a tiny computer inside of it. And also this is the video where your girl tries Linux for the first time ever. Comments are gonna be super good, helpful, productive, and wonderful on this video. <laughs> okay, I joke about that because there's a lot of passionate people about Linux, but I come in peace, okay? Uh, it's kind of intimidating in the beginning, so that's why I just wanna rip off the Band-Aid, share this experience with you guys. Hi, my name is Sarah Dichi, rhymes with Peachy. How are you doing today? So this guy right here, a keyboard with a computer in it, not just any computer, but a Raspberry Pi. So this is a Raspberry Pi 400. It's a Raspberry Pi, similar to the popular Pi 4 Model B, that is stored and passively cooled in this keyboard. It comes with a ton of ports, so all you have to do is plug in the mouse that comes with it, plug in a monitor via the mini HDMI, and boom, you have a full-fledged computer. And for a super reasonable price, I might add. Okay, Sarah, but hold the phone. What the heck is a Raspberry Pi? So if you don't know already, and trust me, if I didn't attempt an electrical engineer degree for three years, I wouldn't know either. So a Raspberry Pi is a bare bones computer that goes for, well, pretty cheap. Anywhere from $25 to $100. It has basic I.O., but as you can see here with ours, there's actually a ton of I.O. Three USB type A, Ethernet, USB-C for power, two mini HDMI for dual display support, a micro SD card. This is literally what your computer is booting off. Like if you want to install an application on it, like you're doing it on a tiny, tiny, micro SD. And then under this enclosure here, you have the general purpose in and out pins. So this is pretty unique. They don't all come in a keyboard enclosure. They usually look like this. It's used for general computing, but more importantly, programming. Ours came with this actually really handy Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. And there's a lot of like Python programming how to's and like how to get started. And it's just really triggering me, triggering flashbacks of when I switched that double E degree to a comp sci in the third year and I wanted to jump off a cliff. But sometimes, honestly, I wish I stuck with it. But going back to what I just mentioned, these GPIOs, these pins on the back is really what makes a Raspberry Pi stand out. The GPIOs, I have a hard time saying that GPIOs, GPIOs, GPIOs. <laughs> the GPIOs allow the GPIOs. <laughs> the GPIOs allow for people to connect lights, displays, anything that can receive a digital signal. So whatever your brain thinks of, you can code it, send those signals to whatever you have hooked up, and you're all of a sudden like a coding wizard. A really cool example of this is someone programmed a screen to basically display their live YouTube subscriber count. That would not be good for my mental health, but just a really cool example. The sky is the limit. So as you can tell, these can be super powerful, not just for a hobby on a budget, but also for educational purposes. Back in my day, we played with these in college, but I'm sure now there's a literal nine-year-old who can just program circles around any Raspberry Pi. And the last thing about Pis, which is, well, the other point of this video, is it does not run Windows, it doesn't run Mac OS, it runs Linux. Before this video, the only thing I knew about Linux was, well, this penguin, something called distros, and people both passionately love and hate it. They love to hate it, they hate to love it. Um, and well, for good reason. Linux is actually used all the time in workplace systems. So think automated checkouts at grocery stores, ATM machines, electronic billboards, and even the servers that maybe you're watching this video from right now, maybe probably those servers are running on Linux. It's literally everywhere. Chrome OS, I'm sure you've heard of that. That's used in Chromebooks. Um, you know, the basically very web surfable, cheap laptops that Google makes. Even Chrome OS is just a heavily modified version of Linux. So odds are you've probably interacted with Linux at one point in your life, whether you knew it or not. Side note, some people think Mac was also based on Linux. However, Mac was built upon an older and even more ancient standard called Unix which we're not getting into today. So yes, it's everywhere, but as for traditional desktop environments, you know, opening up your computer and the, the software that you're using on your laptop, desktop, etc., only 2% of those computers in the world actually run a version of Linux. Now I said version of Linux for a reason. So this is the whole idea of this operating system. It's customization and freedom, meaning that the entire thing is open source. It's free to use, free to make it whatever you want to make it. This leads to individual companies and even individuals themselves to code their own versions of Linux. And here is that word that I referenced in the beginning. These are referred to as distributions or distros or how the people who really know what they're doing call it 
flavors. I probably said that in the most like clinical, uh, non-cool way ever. Flavors. <laughs> One distro can have a beautiful graphical interface like Windows or Mac, and another can be super minimal, super bare bones, and efficient for small personal projects. Here's one quirky version of Linux called Among Us, Us, Us. You get it? Like Among Us, but Among Us. Huh. Okay, so hopefully that is some helpful background. Did you learn anything? Smash that like button. And now we're gonna actually hop in to Linux, hop in to this really cool uh, Raspberry Pi 400. Um, but before that, thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And this is actually a fun Squarespace segment because we actually did the work to finally update my website. Yeah, woo. It's one of those things that have been on my to-do list for forever. So I'm so glad that we tackled it. We basically just updated a ton of different information the different types of brand work that I do, um, some disclosures of, you know, like small investments, some revamped pictures and copy that's just saying, hey, I am who I am, this is what I do. Whether you're a new Peachy Fam member, you're part of the squad now, or if you're a company who wants to sponsor a video, um, there's enough background for you to kind of understand who Sarah Peachy is by your first impression of the home page. And you know, once I started doing this, I'm like, okay, I, you know, you forget Squarespace makes it so easy to update things. and update the content and it's super flexible. You can start with their amazing templates for whatever niche you're in, photography, videography, you're in a rental space, maybe you have an Airbnb, start with their amazing templates and you can just customize and do whatever you want from there. Whether you're showing off a creative portfolio, that's kind of what I need a website for, or you're running an online store, they have so many tools that you can use. So many great third-party integrations. So if you sell um, actual physical products, you have things like ShipStation, um, and then you can take payments from so many different service providers. You can set up PayPal, Squarespace, all the things, and scheduling comes in really clutch for those who need it for services. Again, if you take hair appointments, oh my gosh, I need a haircut. Um, it's been actually so long. There are split ins everywhere. Be nice. Squarespace is the one-stop shop for all of the things. Sending out email newsletters, search engine optimization. Wow, that was pretty aggressive, right? SEO is very important. And also analytics, who's coming to your website? How often are they? Where do they live? in the world, Squarespace offers all of the things. So if you wanna check it out for the first time, just go to squarespace.com, browse around. Their website is actually amazing. And if you're ready to start today, go to squarespace.com slash saradici, that's me, to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Okay, so are you guys ready to rewind a week and see uh, Sarah's first impression of Linux when I only knew about the Penguin and you know a little bit of general knowledge about distros. I was very intimidated, but it was a lot of fun. And also shout out to a member of the Peachy fam, Nathan, who helped me out with this video because when I first uh, wanted to make it, I was like, hey, I feel like kind of an outsider. Let's get someone uh, who can help and understands Linux. And so you might hear me interact with someone off screen um, or even on screen and shout out to Nathan. I'll, I'll put your Twitter handle down in the description below. Okay, everyone, it's official. This is the first time my eyeballs have seen Linux. But first impressions, I'm like, okay, this seems friendly. This seems very familiar, right? I initially was like, how am I even gonna load a web page? But it seems pretty straightforward. Like that's the icon for literally the web. So, okay, Chromium, running on the Chromium here. We got the DuckDuckGo search bar. So let's see, let's just see. Let's just search Saradici. Dangerous, dangerous task. Okay, well, okay, I'm already noticing the scaling is a little off here. I wonder if I can like find settings. So Raspberry Pi like Windows has like, a raspberry button. Let's see, appearance settings. Here we go. It only took me like, what, 90 seconds? Okay, that was extremely straightforward. You know, we can't, um, we can't be uh, surfing the web when the resolution's a little wonky, right? Okay, good SEO, good job Squarespace. We got my website, that's the first hit. That's good. I don't know why I'm just Googling myself. Oh my gosh. Let's see what Famous Birthday says about me. Everything so far seems very normal. Am I, oh. <laughs> I literally thought that was a banner. I, I thought that was like a banner to close out of, but I just clo I closed out of the entire web page. Okay. It's okay. I am, wait for it guys, the 31,908th most popular YouTuber. How does that make you guys feel? That you're, you're in the presence of the 31,000th, almost 32,000th most popular. So how are the web pages loading? 
fast as you normally expect them to? I mean, yeah. I mean, it seems snappy, right? Linus, why is Linus number five? Marquez number four. Jarvis Johnson is number six. Okay, but see, as we got some like jello scroll, not jello scrolling, I don't want to trigger the iPad mini folks, but I will say as we're going down the web page, it's taken a it's taken a beat to load everything. We got a little jiggle jiggle, a little wobble. I need to step up my rank, okay? That's what we've learned through this video so far. Screw Linux. I need to up myself in the ranks and I need a picture. Why don't I have a picture? Okay, web pages seem quick. What if I just wanted to go to the twitter.com? I love how DuckDuckGo is the default uh, web search engine. Um, I recently started using DuckDuckGo and it's very interesting how web pages load versus Google. The keyboard, okay, honestly, typing on this guy, the fact that this is only $100 and there's essentially a computer inside of it is kind of mind blowing because I've spent over $100 on a keyboard before. And that doesn't even have a computer in it, you know? All right, let's, lo let's log into Twitter. Honestly, the fact that I can scroll on Twitter passes pretty much 70% of the tests that I would be concerned about, you know? This experience is not that different from me just scrolling on my $6,000 PC Puget build on Windows, you know? So I will say this version of Linux that comes on this Raspberry Pi 400, it's the Raspberry, what do they used to call it? Raspberry Pi? Raspbian. But it's basically a different uh, version of like a popular, uh, you know, already existing Linux distribution. Everything is like very straightforward. I was actually coming in here thinking that it was just gonna be insane looking, um, but we got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, volume, the time. Let's try to watch a YouTube video. One of my YouTube videos. Okay, so it's struggling loading just the main YouTube page. So I would say this has taken, that took, that took about maybe 10 seconds? Maybe 10 seconds. All right, here's a Sarah Peachy video. 32 of each. Welcome to an okay, uh, slow start, but let's just let it load a little bit. Let's let's knock down. Let's knock it down a, a little bit. We'll just see if we do 720. Three day carry video where we talk about my favorite knives. Yeah, so anything that's changing in the video, like my person, it's definitely struggling loading where my person is moving. <laughs> okay, totally doable. I could watch YouTube videos like this, you know, I don't wanna judge too hard, but um, you know, some frames are dropping and also it's just kinda like struggling. It reminds me of like an old TV where you just see the lines through it basically. <laughs> but first priority, Twitter, and Twitter did great. YouTube, not the best, not the best, but how do files look? So you got bookshelf, what the heck is a bookshelf? It's super straightforward, I don't know why I was thinking, okay, this is the whole, I think this is the point, like don't be intimidated by things because once you try them, they're actually, they're fine. Although I will say, I'm you know taking the next step to basically copy over some photos and videos and it was a whole thing just to make this compatible um, with an XFAT drive. XFAT basically, those are good from Windows and Mac since I go in between um, different computers. Uh, basically had to run a program for this to work, but who knows if it's actually gonna work. Uh, drum roll please, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Thank you, yes. Boom. Removable medium is inserted. Open and file manager. Mona Truth, hey, look at that. Look at that. So we have almost two terabytes of content on this drive. Uh oh, we got this spinny thing. Linux is doing something that Windows can't even do right out the box and you just press space bar. That might actually be VL VLC, not the actual Linux. Um, press space bar to preview. It's thinking. Now this is all 4K footage, so I'm a little nervous. Okay, see we're getting the little loading. I'm not even sure if I have like non 4K footage on this drive. Okay, listen, if you're shooting things in 4K, it's not like you're gonna buy this to edit videos anyway, but here's some photos. Hey, it's loading up those JPEGs like it's no one's business. You see how fast that was? That was. Okay, Sarah. Here's like really crappy zoom footage. It has to load this, right? There we go. Beautiful. This one too, Dell XPS. I mean, the other one actually did look better. A little choppy, but at least we know it can do 1280 by 720 crappy zoom footage, yeah? And it can recognize everything in the drive. It pops up just like on Mac, you have the drive on your desktop here. And the question is, do you right click to eject? Okay, so it's more like Windows and that it's, in, it's on the bar. That makes actually more sense than Windows. When you first use Windows and you're like, that random rectangle thing at the bottom of uh, the dock, like how people know that that's how you eject SSDs and things, 
is beyond me, but that is way more self-explanatory. Okay, so this comes with a solid amount of programs. Oh, Mathematica. This is where I cheated on my math homework. Look at that. So you can cheat on your algebra homework. So we got IDEs, you can get coding. We have, ooh, some ripoff Microsoft Office here. Let's write us a document. Looks exactly like Office. I will say this keyboard does kind of suck. I think I was too nice about it in the beginning, but what can you expect? Games, oh my gosh. Pi Minecraft, oh my God, Python games. Wait, is it gonna like teach me how to code? Can we just like have some flashbacks here? Oh, it's actually a game. I thought it was gonna like teach you how to code via games. Here we go, can I be the computer? I should like, do things other than make videos more. Cause like my brain hurts just playing Connect 4. The computer beat me. <laughs> so the last thing that I wanna see, can this actually handle a creative application? Can we actually do an aspect of my job besides I guess we can you know, open up a Word document, like write a script, we can view images, we can take photos, we can post them on Twitter. Can we edit a video? <gasps> okay, so we're not gonna be able to plug in the iPhone. So I'm literally going to film a video. I'm going to upload it to G Drive and we'll see if we can download it. So I'm just gonna do a 1080 video. Okay, we are uploaded. So we're going to go to Google Drive. We're using an unsupported browser. Mm -hmm. Is it, it doesn't like that I'm not in Chrome. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? So I see it right here, you're working. <gasps> and it just crashed. Okay. All right. I mean, surely, you know what? I'm just gonna take this one step at a time. Surely you can just log into Gmail, right? Right? <laughs> Let's see if it can handle the DG Business Gmail inbox. Okay. Oh. Okay. So the fact that Google is like, nah, you're, you're not on the right, not just OS, but I guess not on the right browser, which is shocking because again, if you're on Mac and you're using Safari, you can still log into Gmail. It's just like, it's not liking this. It just logged me back out. So that's a problem. Okay, so we ran in uh, to, you know, probably the biggest problem about Linux because there are so many different versions of it. Well, very few people support uh, really anything because if you have one application say take chrome right oh if you support linux that means you support like five or six or 10 or 15 or 20 or one version of linux because there's so many different distros so um as you can imagine if you you know have any type of software i'm sure you have support right you have people that can help people with issues um, and i imagine that's a pretty big rabbit hole if you're like okay what version of linux are you on what distro okay what version of that distro are you on okay well i've never heard of that what wait what is that wait, my uh what we should try it. Oh, it's working. Snapdrop saves a day again. So for you Windows users, you know, if you've been over in Mac land before, I'm sure you love AirDrop and you miss AirDrop. Well, Snapdrop is a way you just go to snapdrop.net on your phone and your computer or your iPad and your computer, and they just have to be on the same Wi-Fi network and you can send whatever you want over it and boom, it works. Let's go to files, downloads. Um, the question is, will it play? Hey guys, welcome to another video. Pause, I need to cut here. All right, wow. Look at that, look at that. Okay, uh, so you know, we tried to install a very simple editor to edit some videos and you know what, I give up. <laughs> Um, you know, it's challenging installing not only just applications or finding applications that are supported, but also you have to keep in mind all of these things. You know, we have limited memory, um, we have limited storage. Everything is going on the 16 gigabyte micro SD card that is in the keyboard, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. So all of the basic things that we did, it, it accomplished with flying colors. But if you just want to go one step further, that's where, hey, you kind of start to get some hiccups. Um, and I've also heard that there's a distro that resembles um, the game Among Us that I actually, I just want to kind of have some fun right now, if that's okay. I want to take a break from me trying to make this work. Let's just have some fun, guys. So this distro is just on another micro SD card. So I believe I power this down, eject the micro SD. Um, Nathan is going to hand me another one. And do you just like have this for fun? Or <laughs> for, for this? Okay, for the memes, good, good, good. 
That's that's what we want to hear for the memes. All right, I'm guessing I press log out and then shut down. All of this is way more straightforward than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. We good? Yeah. Eject it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh my god. Among us. Uh, you get nice. it, guys? Guys, do you get it? Among us, among among OS operating systems, you get it? <laughs> okay, I have a confession. I've, yeah, yeah. I've never played Among Us, so I've watched it on Twitch before. I've watched other people play, but I believe this is a game that requires having friends. <laughs> okay, so I don't think it's working. So I don't think this likes maybe our keyboard Raspberry Pi? Why is this application not working? Wow. On the Among Us OS, we have Minecraft working, but not Among Us. That is such a shame. Can I embarrass myself again? I have watched so many Minecraft videos, I've never played it. I have no idea what is involved. Let's jump. Okay, we're, run we're running at 60 frames per second here. Okay, how do I build? Sarah plays Minecraft for the first time. Minecraft Let's Play? Tune in next time where I'll be streaming Minecraft and you'll get these riveting, this riveting content of me making an L out of brick. I feel so old, you know? I'm just like, is this what all the kids are doing? Was first experience that was literally my first <laughs> Minecraft experience. On the yeah. Okay. Good memes, Linux. Next, I want to play Pokemon. Pokemon, gotta catch him. Okay, so we have Nathan now here on camera, and this is his personal Raspberry Pi because he was like, "Hey, I have Pokemon on mine," and I was like, uh, "Excuse me, I want to play Pokemon." Um, and so. We're, we're talking off camera, kind of the legalities of this. I feel like Pokemon is kind of infamous for protecting their copyright and being super strict about that stuff. So I guess with this conversation that we've had with Linux and different distros and downloading different software and stuff, is this another, what you would say, gray area? Absolutely. <laughs> kind of like um, getting those Windows keys for $20. Mm. It's, it's definitely a strange area. Yeah, but yeah. If, if Nintendo provided these games, to, from them, even for a, a high cost, I think the the emulator community would go down by like 30%. Mm. So it's out of necessity that people are, they want to play these old games, but Nintendo won't let them. So. so quite literally, the only way to play them is to get an old Game Boy Color or Advanced and the classic games, and that's the only way to play them. For a lot of them. Like I yeah. think in recent news, they're shutting down the store for the, the 3DS. So wow. once they do that, all of those games are actually lost unless you have bought them downloaded. See, I never thought about that, and that is why everyone on my Nintendo Switch, I buy all of the physical games, and I just recently bought the new Pokemon Diamond, and we're about to, I'm about to go on a road trip, and so that's gonna be like my road trip game. I'm so excited. I have so. a guess which ones you played. Mm. So I've got two of them. It does not work that well. <laughs> it's, I'm not, I've barely tinkered with this, and it barely runs, but. Okay, so pick pick the best running one. Okay, so the fact that this looks like a PlayStation is kind of hilarious. So is this just, what what distro is this? I mean, if you're digging yourself a hole with legality, you might as well just go all the way, right? Yeah, it yeah, like yeah. So it's based off of a distro called RetroArch, which if you're into retro games, you know all about. That's, mm. that's your go-to for retro games. But to actually play the games, I've got it on a flash drive here, mm. and I'm gonna plug it in. And I use my Xbox controller, which mm -hmm. I plugged in, and uh, we load our content. Okay, so I'll see you guys in four hours, all right? I would always, um, when I play this, I would always say I'm a dude, and I would just be Ash. Yeah, Ash is the best. Yeah. Hey! How much is, how much is just the most recent Raspberry Pi, obviously without accessories oh, and things? The most recent one is this one here, uh, in terms of like the full fat Raspberry Pi, right. different versions. Mine is a four gig model, which is like the normal. Uh -huh. You can get it in two gig, one gig, and eight gig. Um, I just go with four, but it should be around a hundred, hundred and thirty dollars. And then you can just download this for free. Yep. I win. Yeah, you picked the wrong Pokemon, freaking loser. Oh, 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 we made it through. Oh, 
<laughs> PG, nice. Now we have a mission. Now we have purpose. See, that's what I like to do. I just like to go for the missions. Yeah, gotta deliver Professor Oak's package. There you go, Professor Oak. Oh, he's giving me my Pokedex. Okay. I all of a sudden have the urge to lock myself in a room, put, put in Pokemon Diamond, turn on the switch, and never talk to you guys ever again. Just kidding. I'm really excited to play that game though. I've been saving it. I know it's been out for months, but I've been saving it. So um, back to future Sarah. Let me know if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy. Check out my Squarespace link. Okay, bye.